What we want to do now is present a scheme for memorizing trig values. To do this, I want to tie together three main ideas. First, we'll have the 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Then, we'll have the cast method. And then finally, we'll have rectangular placement on the unit circle. To start off, we have the unit circle. So it's given by the equation x squared plus y squared equals 1. That's going to be a circle in the xy plane, centered at the origin. Radius is going to be equal to 1. Then, if I take an angle theta, I'll measure that off of the positive x-axis in the counterclockwise direction. OK, so I'll have a theta like that. Then that's going to give me a point on the unit circle. So we call the x value the cosine of theta, the y value the sine of theta. We're going to have to memorize a list of cosine and sine for some special angles. So that's going to be the point of this video. The first step to memorizing values for cosine and sine, we start with quadrant one. Here, we'll call these angles reference angles. And we're typically going to need to memorize the special cases theta equal to 0, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, and pi over 2. For theta equal to 0 and pi over 2, we don't need to do much work. So here we're just going to pick off the x and y value of the angle on the unit circle. So for theta equal to 0, the cosine is equal to 1, the sine is equal to 0. And for pi halves, we'll have the cosine equal to 0, the sine equal to 1. OK, so here we're just looking at the circle. Next important value. This one's pretty easy to memorize. We have pi over 4, or 45 degrees. We're going to have cosine and sine equal to square root of 2 over 2. So how do we get that? Well, if you'll note, on the 45 degree line, that's going to be where we have the line y equals x. If I put y equals x into the equation x squared plus y squared equals 1, that's going to give me x squared equals a half. Then, if I take square root of both sides, and I note we're only using positive x, that's going to be x equal to 1 over square root of 2. And I can clean that up by multiplying by square root of 2 over square root of 2. That gives me my square root of 2 over 2. So it's going to be equal to x, and that's going to give me my cosine. Since I have the line y equals x, that's also going to be equal to the y value. So we'll also have that sine is equal to square root of 2 over 2. If you want to put a picture to that, you have your right triangle with two 45 degree angles. And then you can check this just by using your rules for cosine and sine in terms of the length of the sides. So for the cosine, we have adjacent over length of the hypotenuse. So it's going to give me a 1 over square root of 2. Then for the sine, we'll have the opposite over hypotenuse. That's also going to give me a 1 over a square root of 2. So that's for a 45 degree angle. Where we need to do some work is with the values for pi over 6 and pi over 3. First step, we got to get the order of the angles correct. So note, pi over 6 is 30 degrees, pi over 3 is 60 degrees. So our angles are going to be in this position here. If you don't want to use degrees, then note, pi is roughly equal to 3, so pi over 6 is roughly a half. Pi over 3 is roughly equal to 1. And then we wind up getting the same positions. Now, for the values, okay, both of these angles wind up having cosine and sine, square root of 3 over 2, and 1 half. And then you've got to figure out what 1 goes with cosine and sine. OK, first way we can do this, take a look at the numbers. Now, you'll note square root of 3 over 2 is roughly 0.87. OK, you go to a calculator. If I take a look at our two angles, well, I'll note the x values for each of these, okay? Pi over 6 has a larger x value than the x value for pi over 3. So the cosine of pi over 6 is going to be the bigger number. So that's going to mean I go with square root of 3 over 2. Then we get for free that the sine is 1 half. Then to get cosine and sine of pi over 3, we just reverse the order. 
So that's doing it purely numerically. That's what you want to graduate to. Until you get there, you want to use your 30, 60, 90 triangle. So this is a little bit more cumbersome, but you will get your answer correct if you do it right. Now, the first step is to draw your right triangle and make sure you can tell your 30 degrees clearly from your 60 degrees. Once you've done that, you can fill in the lengths of the sides. So the short length is always going to be equal to 1. The longest, which is the hypotenuse, is always equal to 2. And then our remaining side is going to be a square root of 3. Okay, and then you'll note square root of 3 is roughly 1.7, so it's going to fit between the lengths of these two. Now, to verify our numbers over here, let's just use okay, our rules for trig values using a right triangle. So for instance, if I look at pi over 6, okay, that's going to be 30 degrees. If I want the cosine, that's going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, so 30 degrees is here. The adjacent square root of 3, hypotenuse is 2, so we get a square root of 3 over 2. If I work out the sine, okay, it's going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So it's going to be a 1 over 2, so we get a half. Then you'll note that's going to agree with what we get over here for our pi over 6. So that verifies the method I used over here. Once we're able to find cosine and sine in quadrant 1, to find it for the rest of the unit circle is just a matter of putting in plus and minus signs. The way we do that is using the CAS method. Now the way this will work, depending on which quadrant your angle falls in, you're going to assign it a letter. So for quadrant 4, we'll have a C for cosine, quadrant 1, an A for all, quadrant 2, an S for sine, quadrant 3, a T for tangent. Then the way CAS works, the letter is telling you which of the three functions, cosine, sine, or tangent, is positive, then the other two are going to be negative. So in quadrant 4, cosine is positive, sine and tangent are negative. In quadrant 1, all are positive. Quadrant 2, sine is positive, cosine and tangent are negative. And then for quadrant 3, tangent is positive, sine and cosine are negative. Now, how do you make this work? If someone hands you an angle, okay, you're going to have to find the reference angle. So that's going to be the angle in the first quadrant that has the same x and y value, but we throw away any minus signs. So for instance, if I had my angle back here, if I throw away the sign on the x and the y, okay, they're both going to be negative here, then we're just going to push along these lines that are parallel to our x and y axis. So the reference angle here is going to wind up as this angle there. So the idea would be, I would then find the cosine and sine for this angle, and then I put in, okay, plus or minus sine according to the cast. So since we're in quadrant three, I'm going to take that cosine and sine, put in both minus signs. Since I have tangent, that means the cosine and the sine are negative for quadrant three. Let's look at a concrete example. So let's try sine of five pi thirds. Now, if I plot five pi thirds, it's going to be in quadrant four down here. So the reference angle is going to be given by just moving okay, straight up parallel to the y-axis. So it's going to push me to pi over 3. So if I want sine of 5 pi over 3, we're to find the sine of pi over 3. Okay, That's the sine of 60 degrees. I set up my 30, 60, 90 triangle. Okay, For the sine, I want opposite over hypotenuse. So we're at 60 degrees. The opposite is going to be square root of 3. Hypotenuse is 2. So the sine of pi over 3 is going to be square root of 3 over 2. Now, to find sine of 5 pi over 3, I apply cast. Since I'm in quadrant 4, okay, that's where we start with the C. So cosine is going to be the only positive value there. So that's going to mean for the sine, I have to include a minus sign, and that gets me my answer. Now, why does cast work? Well, just remember, Okay, cosine is the x value, sine is the y value for your angle in the unit circle. So if you'll note, well, all we're doing here is, is just recording okay, the sine on your x and y. So in quadrant 1, we'll have plus plus, quadrant 2, minus plus, 
quadrant three minus minus, quadrant four plus minus. All right, only thing you really need to check now is tangent. Tangent's gonna be equal to y over x, so that's gonna mean if you check each of these, the only way we'll get tangent positive is if both are positive or both are negative. As a final note, I wanna point out a fact that we'll use all the time without noting, but it's worth putting a picture to. So if we have proper multiples of pi over three, pi over four, pi over six, we're gonna get three rectangles on our unit circle. So the idea is gonna be, say if we take pi over four, okay, I connect the dot to three pi over four, connect to five pi over four, connect to seven pi over four and back, it's gonna give me, okay, in this case, it's gonna be a square whose sides are parallel to the x and y axes. Now, it's gonna happen when you do the same thing for pi over six, pi over three. The upshot of this is gonna be, okay, it's gonna be the first thing I note. If you wanna find a reference angle for any proper multiple of one of these, what do you do? You just drop the multiple. So, for instance, if I have seven pi over six, okay, you drop the multiple, that gives you pi over six, if we did it the long way, what do we do? Well, we're gonna travel parallel to the x and y axes until I wind up at a point on the unit circle in the first quadrant. So for seven pi over six, we're gonna go all the way over to here, and then we're gonna go straight up, and then we wind up on pi over six. So the shortcut is just drop the multiple, you get your reference angle. Okay, now we know this is special for the angles I have here. For instance, if we tried that with pi over eight, we're gonna have problems. Okay, for instance, in the first quadrant, okay, you're gonna have two multiples of pi over eight. You're gonna have pi over eight and three pi over eight. So this kind of trick is not gonna apply there. Okay, one other thing you can get, okay, if you wanna compare size of angles, okay, for our special angles that we're using here, well, one thing you can do is draw on these rectangles and then find out where your multiples wind up in the quadrant that they live in. So for instance, if we tried five pi over four versus four pi over three. Okay, now here it's easy enough just to find a common denominator. Okay, wind up with 15 pi over 12 versus 16 pi over 12. Four pi over three is gonna be bigger. But if you were to start with pi over four, pi over three, put the rectangles in, okay, then you would note where your multiples wind up, and then we'd be looking at these two here, and then you'd see that the four pi over three is bigger. So if anything, it's good for checking your work on something like this.